Hey everybody, I compiled a list of 11 different types of income that you don't have to pay taxes on. The more you know about stuff like this, the more you can focus on getting income that doesn't get taxed. So let's run through this laundry list. We're going to start with workers' comp and disability insurance. You get hurt on the job or become disabled on the job. The insurance side of it, not Social Security. The Social Security disability is taxable. But the insurance, the long-term disability insurance that you pay for quite often is completely tax-free. And a lot of people have some wonderful disability insurance paychecks coming in uh, and certainly workers' comp, all tax-free. Next part, scholarships and employer education assistance. So this is kind of that education category. People give you a scholarship to go to school, you're receiving money and you're using it to pay those bills. And the same thing for employer education assistance. Um, there's a certain amount that's allowed to be given to you completely tax-free. It shouldn't show up on your paycheck at all. Then there's the health savings accounts. These are always really cool because you're allowed to put money in. You got to have qualifying plans and situation to be able to put money in there, but you deduct it on your tax return. You can invest it, let it grow, and then pull it out. And as long as it's used for medical expenses, you're completely tax-free on that money. Uh, this is a hodgepodge category, adoption assistance and foster care. So if you're adopting a child, there's lots of assistance programs that are going to hand lots of money to you. Foster care, lots of money goes to you there. Child support and alimony. So if you're paying, if you're, if you're receiving child support or alimony, no taxation on that as well. Then there's federal disaster relief, okay? This is all free money from the feds. Here, have it. Uh, sorry this happened to you. So if you happen to uh, be in, in the fires in, in Hawaii or in a hurricane alley or whatever the case may be, if you get federal disaster relief, completely tax-free. Inheritance and gifts. This one comes with some rules, of course. Uh, gifting, you're allowed to give as many people as you want 18,000 and not report it. Uh, the receiver doesn't have to pay any taxes on it either. So uh, a husband and wife, you know, maybe a, a grand, grandmother, grandfather decide to give grandkids all, what is it, $36,000, 18000 each. They don't have to pay taxes on that, completely tax-free. So that's the gifting side of it. But inheritance, as long as the total net worth of the person passing away right now is less than $13 million, there's no inheritance tax at all, so we don't have to worry about that. Careful, 2026, it is going back down to six plus million. Uh, it's getting cut back in half. Uh, let's see, the next one is life insurance payouts. Believe it or not, the first line of the first tax code uh, is that life insurance payouts will be tax-free. That's very interesting. You go back to the creation of the IRS, and that is the first uh, thing written on there. Shows how powerful these insurance companies were so long ago. So life insurance proceeds, nope, not taxable. Capital gains on your home. You have an exemption of $250,000 per person. So if you're married, that's $500,000 in gains on your own personal residence. Now, again, it has to be your primary residence, and there's some rules around that. You can't just go move into a rental property, claim it as your own, and then sell it. So they're going to do some calculations, two of the five. Sometimes they're going to uh, end up having to um, uh, prorate it, things like that. So your own primary residence, that gain is, is tax-free. Municipal bond interest. So your investing choices, if you have the after-tax savings, meaning not your IRA, not your Roth, you can invest that in municipal bonds and the interest that you get from that is tax-free. Only caution I have is, is uh, that it may cause other taxation. It may trigger the alternative minimum tax. It may cause the taxation of your social security. So you do have to be careful on your use of this uh, type of investing strategy. Roth IRAs, most people know the money you take out of there is tax-free. Now, look, you have to be taxed on the money when you put it in there, but all the growth is completely tax-free. 
And then the last one I want to go through is a little more difficult. Understand that long-term capital gains and qualified dividends, when done properly uh, within limits, are going to be completely tax-free as well. You, you buy a stock, you hold it, and the dividend that comes to you could be a qualified dividend if it meets the criteria. And our tax bracket for long-term capital gains and qualified dividends here is right oh, whoop, right over here. <laughs> and uh, you look at this and, and we have a zero tax bracket. The first $47,000 as an individual, 94 as a married couple is at zero. Now understand, we also have our standard deductions, which are enormous, okay? So on top of that, so we're talking a total income of 120 something thousand dollars here and over $60,000 here. The trick is the total taxable income needs to be less than that for your capital gains, including capital gains and dividends. All has to be less than that. So if you are in this category of 120-ish married and 60-ish single, all your income, including long-term capital gains and qualified dividends, if it's under this amount, then they will be completely tax-free. And managing that becomes really important to be as efficient as you can in retirement, especially. So lots of opportunities for tax-free income. Hopefully this gets your, uh, your, your brain thinking about these things and how we can coordinate that. I'm doing a lot of tax classes, little mini uh, tax tidbits. And so utilize this the best that you can. Everybody loves tax-free income. If I can help in any way, you want to meet with me for any reason, uh, go to yourinvestmentcounselor.com. You can pick how you want to meet with me. Happy to, to look at your situation and answer questions anytime. Obviously, certainly give us a call anytime. And then if you're looking for our full form classes, we do them over Zoom and they're open to the public. So go to fpfeaz.org. That's a nonprofit organization we run here in Arizona. Again, fpfeaz.org. Org. All right. Hope that was a good one. We'll see you next week. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.